Hey, this is Eric, and in this video, we're looking at how to use Google Slides to put an image inside of text to create photo words. So recently, I've been seeing some people sharing some cool designs where they placed images inside of text to create what I'm calling a photo word. Now, as I looked into this, many of them were being created with Photoshop or some other graphics editing tool. And as awesome as that is, unfortunately, not everyone has access to those tools. So I asked myself the question I usually ask in this situation, is there any way to do this using Google tools? And the answer is yes. Just using Google Slides, I was able to create all sorts of creative designs by putting photos inside of text which can be an engaging project for students or for anyone. Let's take a look at how to do this. So the best place to start is at the end. Let's take a look at some of the designs I was able to create. And remember, all of these were created with nothing but Google Slides and public domain or personal photos. For the first example, here's one I made for my word of the new year. I chose focus as my one word because sometimes I get too many plates spinning in the air and I need to focus. So for this design, I took the word and I put an image inside of it with an appropriately bearded man looking out on a sunset and thinking. This could be a fun project for students to pick their one word for the year and insert a picture or pictures to help represent it. For my next example, I decided to make a design with my name. Since I do a lot of professional development trainings, I filled each letter of my name with a picture of me speaking at different conferences and schools. Again, this could be an awesome project for students. They could fill the letters of their name with images of themselves or of things that reflect who they are. The next example is actually something I made for a holiday card that I created this last year. In each number of the year, I put a picture of one of my favorite places I traveled to last year from Florida to Arizona to Maine to right back here in Cleveland. This, again, is something students could do to wrap up a year showing some of their favorite memories. Speaking of Cleveland, the next example I did was a design with the word Ohio, which is where I live. In this case, I put a map of Ohio inside of the word, and then I added a buckeye for our state tree and a cardinal for our state bird. Now, students could have fun doing this for any state or country, filling the letters with a map or a flag or pictures from that area. If the name of the state is too long, they could always just use the abbreviation instead. And speaking of locations, I got a little more creative with my next example for New York, New York. For this design, I put the New York City skyline inside of the letters, but then I let the image continue down below to show the water as well. I then did a similar approach for the word sunset, where I put the top half of the picture inside of the word, and then I left the bottom half alone. I did change the background color to yellow as I thought that gave it a nice look. Then for my next example, I reversed that approach for the word dive. Here I left the top half of the picture alone and then put the bottom half inside of the word. I also changed the background to black to fit the underwater theme. Then I had a lot of fun with the word burger. Here I cut the image into three pieces, leaving the top and the bottom alone, and then putting the middle inside of the word burger. And then as a bonus example, I got really carried away and I made an animated photo word by combining lots of individual slides into a GIF. All of these examples show that educators and students can do so much with an activity like this. Students can make photo words to illustrate a concept or represent a vocabulary word to describe themselves or a place or a character and more. Educators can use photo words to help students learn a new word by visualizing that word with an associated image. So how do you actually make a photo word using Google Slides? Well, let's take a look at the process. 
So for our step-by-step -step demonstration, I'll be making my word of the year example from earlier where I used the word focus. This is one of the simpler examples, so it's a good way to learn the basics for creating a photo word. Now, if you do need something simpler, I do have a free template for the One Word of the Year project that has a few of the items already filled in to help get you started. You can get your own copy of that template using the link in the description below this video. On the other hand, if you want to do something a little bit more advanced than this example, I will be doing a live stream webinar where I'll show how to make some of the more complicated photo words. The link to that webinar is also in the description of this video. For now though, let's go step by step through creating our basic example. So we're going to start off with a new Google slideshow. We can remove the title and the subtitle though, we just need a blank slide to begin with. First, we're going to begin by adding our word, which we're going to do as word art. What we'll do is go up to the insert menu and then choose word art from the drop down menu. Next, we'll type in our word using all capital letters. I find that capital letters tend to look better as they give more room for the photo to show through. We can then press enter to insert our word art. Next, we need to change the font for our word art. And this is where the trick comes in to be able to make a photo word in Google Slides. You see, the problem is that most every font has the letters filled in with a solid color, and then it's transparent outside of the letters. To do a photo word, we need the exact opposite. We need a font that is transparent inside of the letters so that the photo can show through, but then has a solid color outside of the letters to hide the photo there. Well, it turns out that out of the 1,400 plus fonts that Google provides, there's exactly one font that meets that criteria. And that font is called Zilla Slab Highlight. Zilla Slab Highlight is the inverse of every other font that Google provides. Zilla is transparent inside of the letters and then colored outside of the letters, which makes it perfect for creating a photo word. Now, if you don't have that font as an option yet, you can do the following. Go up to your font menu in the top toolbar and then choose more fonts from the drop down menu and then just type in the word Zilla. In the results that you get, just select Zilla Slab Highlight and then click OK. Now you'll have Zilla Slab Highlight available as a font choice whenever you need it. So at this point, we will want to reformat our word art with that font. So we'll select the word art and then go back up to the font menu and choose Zilla Slab Highlight. Next, we'll click the bold formatting option up in the top toolbar to make the text bold, which will give even more room for the photo to show through. Next, we'll want to click and drag the corners to make this fit within our slide to whichever size we prefer. If needed, we can use the Arrange menu to center our word art horizontally and vertically on the page. Now we're ready to add our photo. The image can come from anywhere, including a Google image search or public domain image sites that you like, maybe your Google Photos, your Google Drive, or even an image you've taken. In this example, we're going to use a Google image search to find our image. So first we'll click insert and then image and then search the web. This will open a panel on the right hand side of the screen where we can type in our search to find the image that we would like to use. Once we find an image that we want, simply click on it and then click on the insert button at the bottom. Now that our image has been inserted, we want to line it up with our word art text. To be able to see both the photo and the word art text is helpful to temporarily make the photo partially transparent. Here's how to do that. So first click on the photo to select it and then go up to the format options button in the top toolbar. This will open up the format options panel over on the right 
and you can click on the section called Adjustments. In here, you'll see a transparency slider. I would say move that up to anywhere around 50% or so. Now we're able to see both the photo and the word art so that we can align everything properly. So next, we're going to want to move and resize and crop the photo as needed so that it lines up properly with the inside portions of our word art text, but so that it doesn't extend outside of the word art box. When we're all done, the photo will only show through the inside of the letters and it should be hidden everywhere else. So if you need to resize the photo, you can just click and drag the corners. If you need to crop the photo, the easiest thing to do is just double click on it and you'll get these black bars that you can click and drag to crop the photo. You can then click out of that or click on the crop image button at the top to exit from the cropping mode. To move a picture, simply click and drag anywhere on the image. And if you need to, you might want to zoom out a little bit if it helps you be able to see the entire slide a little bit better while you're working. So for my example, I think I want to get the person right in the middle of the U. So I'll move that over a little bit. Uh, let's move it up a bit. That looks pretty good there. Um, I probably could uh, shrink this down a little bit, but I think that is fitting in there pretty well. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on the picture and I'm going to do the cropping. I'm going to crop it down so that it's inside of the word art box so that it won't be peeking out around the box. And then I'll click on the crop button to exit that. That looks pretty good. Once we have the photo and the word art text lined up the way we want, it's now time to combine everything together. First, we want to reset the photo transparency so it's back to normal. To do that, we'll click on the photo, then go back to Format Options and over to the Adjustments and make sure we slide the transparency all the way back down to zero. Next, we want to push the photo behind the word art text. And there's a lot of ways you can do this. You can right click on the photo and then choose order to push it backwards. Or you can go up to the arrange menu and then choose order and push it backwards. I think it's easiest just to use the control up and down arrows or command up and down arrows, depending. So in my case, if I click on this and I press control down arrow, boop it moves it behind the word art. Now again, if I press the up air, control up arrow, it'll move it forwards. And again, if I push the down arrow, it'll move it back again. Now, if we want, we can change the fill color and the border color of the word art box so that it matches our background of the slide. Uh, first of all, you'd want to decide what you want the background color of the slide to be. I could leave it white like this, uh, but if I want to change it, I can simply right click and choose change background or I can use the background button up in the top toolbar and I could pick a different color for the background. I'm just going to leave it white though. So to change the fill color of the word art box, I will select the word art box and then I'll go up to the fill color button up in the top toolbar. It looks like a paint can and I will choose white for that. Next, I'll go ahead and change the border color as well. That would be the border color button up in the top menu bar. And again, I'll choose white for that. Now, when all done, our photo word is blending perfectly in with the slide. Now, if we want, we could add some extra items to our slide, such as text boxes or other images. For example, we could add text to the top of the slide and to the bottom of the slide to complete our design. When we're all done creating our photo word, we have several options for sharing or using it. We can download it as an image by clicking on File and then Download and then choosing PNG Image. Of course, we could also share it through the normal Share button up in the top right hand corner. Or we can publish it by clicking on the file menu and then going to share and publish to the web. Here we can get a published link or the code to embed the slide. 
Now, if you or your students create photo words, I would love to see what gets made. Feel free to send them to me or tag me, or if you share them on social media, use the hashtag photo word. Again, this example was a basic photo word with a little creativity and some tips and tricks, you can go much further and design way more advanced photo words. Now, to help with this, I will be doing a live stream webinar where I'll show how to make some of the more complicated photo words. The link to that webinar is down in the description of this video. And that's it. With these tips, you and your students can create photo words with Google Slides. I am excited to see what gets created. And if you want some more creative ideas on how to use Google Slides for teaching and learning, be sure to check out my resource at bit.ly slash Kurtz dash slides. And for all the rest of my educational technology resources, be sure to visit my site at controlaltachieve.com. Follow me on Twitter, subscribe to my YouTube channel, sign up for my email newsletter, and check out my book, Control Alt Achieve, Rebooting Your Classroom with Creative Google Projects. Thanks so much, and take care.